Hi there, we're going to do a short video showing you the data entry screen in Sirius. I'm running Sirius version 1.3 and I'm in the main screen, the main window where we look at our chart wheels and whatever else we want to look at. Uh, the first thing I'd recommend, at least for the great majority of people, is to use what we call the freeform style. Uh, so we're going to go into settings, we click on this set icon, and go down to the bottom menu item, other settings, edit interpretations, company name, etc. And it opens this window. Uh, and there are four tabs, we call them. And one of them is Appearance Advanced. And here we see uh, one, two, three, four, five more tabs. And under the data entry, right here on, on the default, which is data entry, date and time, we see the choice of structured and freeform. Uh, and I've selected freeform. I believe we ship Sirius with structured selected, which would be this. In future versions, we're planning to change this to freeform, because freeform is really just nicer uh, for most people. You, structured means exactly what it sounds like. You have this, you know, two digits for the month, two digits for the day, and you have to type them in like that. Freeform allows you to just type uh, as, as we'll see in a second. And here's a format for entering dates, whether you want the American or European style. Um, and and for displaying dates. You have one for entering, one for displaying, and the same thing for time. Whether you're using the European 0 to 24 hour style or the a American AM, PM. Well, you know, these terms, American, European, are somewhat arbitrary, but you have the idea. Whether you're using AM, PM, or the 0 to 24 hours. Actually, when you use the free form, there's some flexibility uh, anyway, so it's not that rigid. And, and you have a distinction between what you're displaying and what you're entering. So if you prefer to enter it in, say, European style, you do that, but maybe you're giving something to someone who's in America and wants American style. So anyway, I've got this set to American style here. Uh, that's fine. And free form. We'll click OK. So that's the settings. Now, let me show you the data entry screen. We click on the new icon, and we can either clear all entries and start a new list, which means over here in the upper right corner of our screen, it would remove all that. So if I don't need to look at, you know, Beethoven and Mozart and Vivaldi and so on, I can just uh, start new, or I could add to this list. Uh, so let's add a new natal chart to this list. And we're in the data entry screen. So, name. So you type the name. Uh, and down here in yellow, it recommends last comma first. The reason for that is you probably have fewer people with a given last name than with a first name. So, uh, let's say I want to do an American president, uh, Obama. So I do type in Obama. And what do I see here to my right? Barack Obama. Well, how do you like that? He's already in the database. And that's because there are over 60,000 charts provided with Sirius. So there's a good chance if you're doing a famous person that that person's data may already be there. Um, and the nice thing is you don't have to click on, you know, database or something and search around and hunt. Just You just type, and if you see it, you click on it. So there he is. I don't have to enter it after all, he's already there, click on his name, and there it is. There's his birth data. It tells me that he's his category is he's a senator, representative, etc. Um, he's a government uh, official. And the accuracy is AA, quoted from birth certificate or birth record. Of course, well, that's a political thing. Some people say his birth certificate's not valid, but anyway. Um, so... Uh, and th there's your accuracy choices. So that's it. It's already filled in, of course, because um, we read in his data from file. Um, so there you go. It's it's that simple. In this area here is all the information. It's the latitude and longitude and so on. Now, let me enter somebody's data who's not in the database. So I'll click on this new natal button, because I want a new natal. It clears it. It's added Obama to my list of charts. Here's my list of entries. Uh, and I'll just make up a name. Uh, boy, how do I make up a name? 
Herr äh, Thornton, uh, Robert. So there is nobody there. What if we had two people with the same name? What if the person's name was Smith Bill? I already have a Bill Smith. Well, you could put a space after the comma. That would distinguish it. Uh, you, so you can't have two names in the database with this, you know, two people with the same name. Uh, well, let's just do this. Bill Smith. And there's the free form style, which means you just type in the date. So suppose he's born on July 15, 1948. Um, so you just type it in. I can hit tab or go down to the next field. And there it is, July 15, 1948, confirming. What if I typed it 15 July 1948? Well, it figured it out that it's still July 15, obviously. Um, and because I've got American style, it's reorganized it. What if I put 15 July 48? Well, it thinks it's the year 48. <laughs> Not 1948. So humans, you know, might think 48 means 1948, but you can go all the way back to 5000 BC. So it pops up this screen telling you about issues of calendars, all kinds of calendar issues. So if you enter an ancient date, it gives you this information about dates, old style and new style calendars, gives you information about different countries and when they started, the new we could call the new style calendar, the calendar that's used in most places. Um, but look at this. Um, Alaska changed from old style to new style in 1867. Albania in 1912. Uh, but Andorra back in 1582. Austria in 1583. So some people think the old style calendar was only used, you know, hundreds of years ago. But, you know, you could get somebody born in the early 1900s. Maybe they parent of one of your clients or something born in your in Albania and look at that uh, would have been old style calendar um, so uh, Sirius always uses the new style calendar so if it's old style do you want to convert it uh, so if it's an old style calendar you can you say yes convert it to new style I'm just going to click no here date has not been changed fine so my point was that the year 48 is the year 48. It's not 1948. So if Bill uh, is a contemporary person, 1948. Uh, and then you'd put in the time. It defaults to the current time. Suppose he's born at 4.30 p.m. What if I type 16.30? Ha! Huh, it knows it's 4.30 p.m. So it's not that fussy. Um, you know, it, it tries to figure out what you're doing. Now, where was he born? Oh, we could pick any old place. How about London, England? So I type London, and as I type, it looks up the places. This is the wonderful thing, just like the names. You don't have to say, click on Atlas, look here, da 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 da. It just uh, searches. Now, here's my list of places London Bridge, Virginia, London, Britain, Pennsylvania, etc. Uh, and I have a, here's London, England down here. So I could just keep typing, comma, space, whoops, I hit a period, comma, space, E, and it found it. The other thing I could do, let's say I typed up to London, I can hit the tab, or click over here on World, and type ENG, hit tab, and I'm back. So if you're really into speed typing, you can just hit tab rather than use your mouse, and now I just see the places in England. Uh, so you can restrict your search. There's London, England. Click on it, and it fills in the latitude and longitude and time zone and DST. Um, and so DST is observed. Now, let me show you this. This is a cool thing. What if you say, oh, it's not July, it's January? Uh, you know, this happens, right? You're talking to the client or. They say it was July 15th. Oh, no, no, it's January 15th. Okay, no problem. Go up here to January. That's fine. Um, then when you click on something else, like I click on the time, it says read in new time zone and daylight saving time information for this new birth data. Let me slide this over. Because in the winter, 
DST is not observed, I say yes, and it changed the DST, the daylight saving time, to no. So this is a nice thing. Uh, Sirius is very smart. It's looking over your shoulder, so to speak. You might not think of it. You probably wouldn't. Uh, you know, I mean, most of us wouldn't. I wouldn't think of it. That, gee, I changed the uh, the date. I better make sure the DST and time zone information I looked up is updated. So it, you know, it does it for you. Uh, so there you go. You can, you know, you can give a category to him, an accuracy rating. Uh, and over here in the upper right corner is the a category of data you want to read from. So let me hit New Natal. And it says, ah, you didn't save Bill Smith. Do you want to save him? I normally save everybody to file, but this is purely nonsense. I'm going to say no. But if it's a real person, I always save it. Why not? That data is there. You never know if you want to call it up again. Now, let's say... I'm curious about what, um, <clears throat> say, guitarists are in the database. So I might say, um, you know, some particular guitarist, I wonder if he's there, and type in his name, Segovia. Ah, Andre Segovia, looks like he's there. Um, and you might want to know who else is there. Well, there's a few things you can do. One is, you can go over here to File to Read, click on select a category and you've got the famous categories and we look for musicians and we can select all musicians or go down to specifically guitarists so this is fantastic you, did you follow that? you can get all the musicians that means all these guys you know piano, violin, singing or just guitarists now I've done that, I click OK and now I'm going to be reading in just the guitarists. So, um, I've got Greg Allman, Chet Atkins, Eric Clapton, and so on. Uh, what if I want to read in a lot of these all at once? Do I have to keep typing them in? We've got a cool feature for that. Get group of charts. We click on that, and now my current category, which is guitarists, it shows them all. And there they are. Well, there's not that many. Like 20 or 30. So if I want, you know, Chet Atkins, Oh, it's giving me a preview of their uh, of their of their wheel. Uh, kind of flashed by because I'm recording this. Anyway, I click on who I want, click on OK, and it reads in all three of those charts. I've read in Chet Atkins, Eric Clapton, and Gene Clark. So, bottom line is data entry screen. Just type it in. Sirius will find out if that chart's uh, already in the database. If you want to search just a certain group, you can do that. Type in the place. It looks it up as you type. Uh, you can put in notes here as long as you like. And there's a little place here to zoom in. It's give you more room to type. There's also a thing called keywords. I won't get into that right now. It's an advanced feature. Um, there's also, you can save your current entries. This is good if you're teaching a class, for example, and you've got all the students in the class with their progressions and transits and everything. You can save it and recall it later. Uh, you've got your lunations and ingresses, uh, lunations and eclipses, ingresses, where you can say, give me charts of planets entering signs and so on. And there's, you know, all this stuff. So, uh, that's what you do. I mean, for most uses, you just type in what you want and, and away you go. Um, and if you want those other features, they're there as well. Um, that's it. That's the basic idea. I click Done. It calculates the charts very rapidly, and now they're all listed here. So if I want to see Eric Clapton, I click on him in the upper right corner. There's his chart. Chet Atkins, there's his chart, etc and I can jump between my charts, select what reports I want, and so on. So that's the data entry screen. Very simple, um, very fast. If you're doing, if you're talking to a client on the phone and they're giving you further information, you, you can type this in at the speed they're talking, basically, which is really nice because of that fast lookup. I'll show you one more cool thing, and then we'll be done. It's not the data entry screen. But look, let me, let's suppose I'm looking at... Um, who am I looking at? Chet Atkins. And suppose I select something for him. 
I'll just do something very simple. Uh, suppose I go to listing, and I'm interested in degree meanings, and I pull up this listing of degree meanings by 11 different authors. I click OK, and then it calculates uh, these degree meanings. It takes a few seconds to calculate, and here's the meaning of the sun degree, according to Sabian symbols, according to the Mark M. and Jones version, the Rudyard version, Charable, La, La, La Velocifera, uh, Matthews, etc. So all of these different degree meanings, very handy. Now let's say I'm looking at, um, uh, I want to see the degree meanings for somebody else. I can uh, select, uh, multi-select. This little button down here in the lower right corner, select for other entries, and I can select this, say, for Eric Clapton and, uh, you know, whoever else I want. I'll just do Eric Clapton. Uh, click OK. Now when I go to Eric Clapton, he has the same two reports. This is very handy, for example, when you're doing astro maps and you've selected a certain location or a certain kind of forecast. Uh, you can quickly make those same selections for another entry. Very common thing. So that's a form of selecting information. Um, I thought I'd just throw that in as well. Okay, well, I, this was supposed to be a short video. I'm up to 16 and a half minutes. We'll stop here. That's a, a fairly quick look at the data entry screen and a few other little goodies in the Sirius program. Uh, thanks for watching. God bless. Namaste.